Everyone is talking about this one weird synthetic drug called N-bomb that's being sold as acid, and so everyone's taking it without even realizing. Visually, everything was morphing, and I felt like I was melting, kind of. The clouds that were kind of violently kind of mixing with each other and then crashing down um, onto the ground, to me it felt like the drug itself had was giving me anxiety. You put it under your tongue, and your, your whole mouth and tongue started getting numb and metallic. It can uh, give you really bad nausea, so I was starting to feel sick from it. These are chemicals that don't have an industrial purpose, they don't have a medicinal purpose. They're only manufactured to get people high, and they're very dangerous. When you have 17 deaths in 11 states in a very, very short period of time, we see that as an imminent threat to public health and safety, and we've got to take action. One of the most tragic cases is that of the Romaine brothers. I spoke to Greg Romaine, a young guy who had to watch his brother die after taking N-bomb. It was a nice day. We were admiring you know, the bushes and the trees and just like looking at the visuals, enjoying the, the eye candy. And the last memory I have that I went into my kitchen, that's when I saw my brother lying on his back. Um, and his, he had vomit trails going down either side of his mouth. Um, his, his face was gray and his lips were blue and that's when my, my stomach just absolutely dropped and I knew that something horrible had happened. So what makes N-bomb so dangerous? Few people know more about it than Vice's in-house chemist, Hamilton Morris. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Good. So let's start with the basics. What is N-bomb? N-B-O-M-E stands for N benzyl methoxy. OME is O for oxygen, ME is methyl, which is a methoxy group. And it is a class of phenethylamine derivatives that are, for the most part, very potent psychedelic drugs. They're research chemicals in the sense that they're used in actual scientific and medical research, and they are research chemicals in the euphemistic sense that they are gray market chemicals that are sold not for human consumption, for recreational use. Um, so the problems associated with N-benzyl phenethylamines seem to be a result of people making blotters that are not dosed responsibly. They're too strong or they're inconsistent in their potency and people accidentally overdose. Dr. David Nichols was the first person to make N-bomb in America back in 2007, when he was leading a research team at Purdue University. He was trying to better understand certain aspects of the brain's serotonin receptors. This research could treat conditions like depression, anxiety, and schizophrenia. No one's died of an LSD overdose, or a psilocybin overdose, or a mescaline overdose, but they've died from N-bomb, and the question is, is it an overdose or are some people just super sensitive to it and nobody's answered that question for me. So these people are dying but uh, no one knows. Could you tell me a little bit about the history of NBOM? It was part of the PhD work of this guy Rolf Heim. So we just synthesized it and put it into our assays. If we understand what it does, it might be possible to use that same strategy on therapeutic drugs and make them, for example, much more potent or much more selective. So it's not just understanding how psychedelic works. It turned out that a number of things in my lab had made their way into the street drug scene. I was shocked the first time. I was contacted by a woman in North Dakota whose son had given some of this drug to friends and they had died, overdosed. So you struggle with feelings of responsibility? I wouldn't say I feel responsible. Someone asked, well, do you have to publish your work? I said, well, that's the paradigm in science. You publish your work so people know. And I just feel sad that, that people make those kind of decisions or do irresponsible things that, that lead to those kind of tragedies. New strains of chemicals, such as N-bomb, are being created so quickly these days that the law has a hard time keeping up. We have a responsibility under the law to look at, at substances, drugs, chemicals that pose a direct and imminent health threat. And if we see that, and we can illustrate it and we have cases to, to back it up, we can actually schedule it on a temporary basis for up to three years. And that gives us time to research it further for the medical and scientific community within the federal government and outside the federal government to do research to determine if it should be permanently controlled. NBOM was temporarily restricted by the DEA in 2013. From my perspective and all I know in the field, I'm not sure what advantage research with NBOM would be other than to understand why it's so toxic. Why does it kill people? 